You know, my folks actually got this for me back when they went to Greece, and you know what? Coming out of the movie I just did? Not a bad thing to hold up here. Gotta say that. Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music movies, art, and culture. And today, we're doing another movie review, this time of the brand new DC movie, Wonder Woman. So let's be very blunt about this. I am probably more of a DC fan than I am of a Marvel fan. And yeah, Marvel's put out a ton of great movies, but when you go back to the comics, go back to the roots of these characters, I gotta say, I like DC more. I like more of their archetypes. I like more that these are characters that you can look up to, whereas a lot of Marvel characters, you can relate to them. The DC characters, at their best, they represent a certain higher ideal that I think you can do a lot of really, really cool things and opportunities for storytelling there. The sad fact is that it makes telling these stories a little bit more complicated. It actually forces you to think a little bit more about the central ideas behind these superheroes. And I have to say that because a lot of times when they've made these DC movies, particularly the most recent incarnation of them, they've struggled a lot. Look, I like some DC films. I, in terms of the Dark Knight trilogy, there's a lot of potential there, even though The Dark Knight Rises just pisses me off to no end. But when you go into a movie like, say, Man of Steel, where you get the feeling that Zack Snyder fundamentally misunderstood Superman's character, he more gravitated towards the iconography and the symbolism rather than the ideas behind it, and he also forgot to tell a coherent narrative, then you've got a little bit of a problem. And Batman v Superman was somehow even worse. You hire great actors, you have so much style to the film, but you so firmly misunderstand the characters and the whole narrative backing them that it kind of turns into a complete mess. And Suicide Squad, Points for trying, points for a decent cast, points for some great performances. Again, they hired some good actors to play these parts, but that movie was a slog and something of a total mess, and Jared Leto was awful as the Joker. But you know what? Going into Wonder Woman, I had a lot of high hopes. I gotta be really honest with that. I was really concerned going into this movie, though, because you still had Zack Snyder's team behind the production. And yeah, Patty Jenkins is a great director. I was excited to see what she would do with this character. But again, the requirements for these sort of big budget superhero films, they can be tough to pull off. And sure, Gal Gadot, from what I had seen of her in Batman v Superman, she had a lot of promise as an actress, but this is a lot to be resting on one main character to be able to pull this sort of thing off. And consider you're also hiring on Chris Pine, who, let's be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the guy, especially what they did in the Star Trek reboot. I thought he's a total charisma vacuum in those films. I was really genuinely concerned that Wonder Woman wouldn't be able to pull off its very high ambitions, provide a new grounding point against the critical disasters that have been the previous three DC movies. And as such, there's going to be a lot of critics who, when they look at Wonder Woman, are going to be very, very tempted to say, well, it's that new brand new start. It's going to be praised so much more for not only being the first female-fronted superhero movie, but it's actually good, because yes, this is a good movie, I want to stress that, but also that it's in comparison to the rest of the DC movies being as bad as they are. The funny thing is, is that while this movie does have problems, and we will get into them, and spoiler warning, I'm putting that up right now, I will throw up another spoiler warning when we get to the in-depth plot details, I think that there's going to be some praise for this simply because it has color, it has personality, and the personality doesn't drive me absolutely crazy. Because yeah, I really like this movie. I don't think it's a great movie per se, but again, there is something to this, and the fact that DC managed to stick the landing by in a way conforming with certain conventions, but in other ways bucking them when in comparison with their own films, that's kind of amazing to me because at its core, one of the things that's driven me off the wall about other DC movies, like Man of Steel, like Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, like Suicide Squad, is that they didn't have a fundamental grasp of the basics of this sort of action storytelling. Whereas with Wonder Woman, the basics are so strong, the foundation is so clear and transparent, that you almost wish they had taken a few more risks, that had gone a little bit further off. And that is a lot of credit to a few main sources, so let's start off with the main plot of this film. If you're familiar with Wonder Woman's origin story, it's 
a slightly adapted version of what they have in the comics in terms of Wonder Woman's relationship with the gods in that particular case. Where there is callbacks to certain elements of how she was fashioned of clay and then given life by Zeus and Themyscira. I have to say I really loved all the segments in Themyscira. There's so much color, there's so much actual character. Uh, again, I like watching Amazon Society. It's really cool. And when you interject Chris Pine into that sort of situation, as I'm not a fan of him as an actor, he kind of did a great job in this role because all he's really required to be, he's required to be cynical, he's required to be a little bit rough behind the edges, but at the same time, a lot of his main acting is now, I'm surrounded by scores, if not hundreds, of beautiful women who can all kick my ass. I kind of have to watch what I'm saying and what I'm doing here. And he kind of plays pretty decent both comic foil and action hero foil slash romantic foil to Gal Gadot as Diana. I think a lot of people have stressed that they aren't sure whether Gal Gadot is a great actress simply because she has a very distinct and unique presence in comparison with what you would typically expect for this role or in comparison with other female superheroes. But a big part of that is that she does have a certain intensity and fervor to her character that is balanced out with a lot of kindness. I I'm gonna say this right now, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman might be some of the most inspired casting and all now gets to the same level of casting as Chris Evans as Captain America as Steve Rogers because it falls along the very similar we they are good people for good reasons and I really appreciate how much that parallel runs through but again that's also ties back to one of the things with Wonder Woman and how much this does parallel certain uh, Marvel movies and I'm not saying that as a dismissal of the fact that DC's just cribbing notes from Marvel, even though there are certain plot elements that will do that and we'll get to it. But I'm also saying that they're cribbing the element from Marvel, which I really like, and that is structure, a focus on character, and a focus on a character who is really a good human being. And you know what? Points to Gal Gadot and Chris Pine, they actually have a lot of chemistry. They've got a couple great one-on-one -on -one scenes that you can really buy into it. I would pretty much have had no problems sitting back and having them have more conversational scenes. I really like that because, again, they bounce off each other well. Both her in her fish-out-of-water sort of way calls a little back to Captain America First Avenger. Actually, a fair amount back to that. Well, again, we'll come back to it. Chris Pine has such a world-weary. She's kind of like a little bit of a fish-out-of-water, but at the same time, I know she can pretty much destroy me. And it's kind of hilarious watching how Pisa, you know what, I'm just going to roll with it. I'm going to keep trying to tell her what to do because... That's really how he was socialized at that time. But at the same time, she's going to do whatever the hell she wants. And I really appreciated how he's just like, well, crap, I'm just going to go with it. And then that has to be said something for the supporting characters as well. Because when you have a character like Gal Gadot and, and Diana Prince in this film, when Wonder Woman now returns, leaves Themyscira, and goes off to London and interacts with the supporting group that Chris Pine brings on for this mission in order to stop, I think it was her name was Dr. Poison and Lufendorf, which is the German general that wants to utilize some experimental form of poison gas and cause massive casualties. The thing is that I really like how much that Patty Jenkins understands and how quickly she can introduce these characters just through visual shorthand, through a lot of their activity, and how they basically have to bounce off Gal Gadot more than she has to directly interact with them. Even though, credit to her, she does interact distinctly with them. There is a fully fleshed out character here that you can really come into. And you know what? I'll give them a lot of points for that, being able to establish so much so quickly because really, she, there is a fair amount about Wonder Woman's ethos that's kind of out there. Especially with the whole elements of connection to the Greek gods. And the fact that they are now having these very much early 1900s archetypes set against World War One interact with that, it leads to a very interesting balance. And it also leads to a lot of really inspired, cute comedy bits that I thought were really in place. That's another good thing that I appreciate is that whereas you can take a movie like Batman v Superman or Suicide Squad, where the comedy is kind of dark and just kind of feels misplaced, here with the more historical tone, it doesn't feel misplaced. These are conversations that occur naturally and in some cases are kind of inspired in how they bounce off of each other. Now, around all this, I've kind of skirted around talking about the plot. There's kind of a reason for that because, well, let's just say the thematic elements, I think, could have been slightly better explored. I'm happy that they went with the theme they did because there is something to be fleshed out in terms of Wonder Woman's character as an arc because, like with Superman, I can see a lot of people saying, 
saying, well, how can you tell a story about a woman who is so inhumanly perfect? And again, if you see Gal Gadot in this movie, again, inspired casting there, in that department at least. But at the same time, there is a significant thematic arc here, and it surrounds the whole idea of war. Now, one thing that really comes across here is that Gal Gadot's character, when she discovers that she's that person to take up the weapon of the god killer to bring down Ares, who is the god of war, obviously, and then she will finally restore peace by fighting against him. It's very much telling that when she tells this to Chris Pine, when she tells this to the team, they're basically like, uh, yeah, that's not really anything we can buy into. Like, Ares isn't real per se. And it leads to an element where Diana, she might seem a little bit naive, but again, her heart is in the right place, and she's got the muscle and fortitude in order to back it up. So, I actually really appreciated when she f identifies the evil general on the German side, Lugendorf, and she basically goes after him, and then, spoilers, she manages to track him down and stop him, when he doesn't turn out to be Ares, at least to a pretty potent moment, because again, this is dealing with the realities of war, and World War I at that. One of the things I like that Patty Jenkins emphasizes is the mud, the grit, the grime, uh, the level of darkness and desaturation that comes into the color palette around these scenes really is striking. It, it does a lot through, again, visual shorthand to identify how bleak this situation is, and how strong that Wonder Woman, how Diana is standing against that, how she doesn't believe in it. Even comparisons to the fights on Themyscira, which are very bright, there's a lot more color and saturation that comes against the white cliffs. When she goes back into the rest of the world, it is a dank, it's a bleaker film. But again, whenever Wonder Woman does show up, she does bring a little bit more color to the proceedings. It's not all the sharp blues and orange palette. There is a little bit more that she injects into these scenes. And again, that's credit to not only tremendous screen presence, but also tremendous direction and being able to place her, not so she overwhelms the film, but that she brings a certain amount of passion and light at, through her character. So when she's confronted with the fact that when she kills this guy and, and Chris Pine's character confronts her and basically the question becomes is like, maybe Ares doesn't really exist. Maybe humanity is simply has those natural, aggressive, violent tendencies in there. And that's something that you have to really come to grapple with, the genuine horrors and complications that come with war. Presenting to a character like Diana, that's a hard thing to stomach, being able to present modern war against something, in her view, which would be more idealized. Hell, it's almost kind of reminiscent of those golden age 40s and 50s movies that did paint war with a little bit more simplicity. Good guys versus bad guys, which again is how Chris Pine and initially sets up the conflict, but then Diana's smart enough to realize that that's not quite entirely the case there. And then Ares shows up. Okay, points to uh, David Fluis for his performance and what he does there in introducing this character, basically to inspire Diana to be more violent, be more like him, be the person to will eventually wipe out humanity and bring upon some vestige of regrowth towards peace. The problem is, is how he's interjected into the movie. You get incidental ideas that he will show up in like the second act and he's originally planted the whole idea of Ares is planted in the first act but again I feel this character should have been a little bit more central to the plot he'd been a little bit more injected into the general proceedings of the film beyond just some character that's lurking off to the side and kind of orchestrating things and manipulating things behind the scenes to an armistice that again will not work because again this is set at the very end of World War One. they're negotiating the armistice I wish they had done a little bit more to interject his character more. And honestly, I think this movie might have had a little bit more power if, she, if Diana had come to the realization, without the character of Ares, that, you know what, humanity does have that natural impulse, that light and darkness within each other, to fight, to stark up wars, but there is still something that can transcend that. I would have preferred more of that peacekeeper mold than you have to have a, little, a literal embodiment of the god of war for her to face off against in the third act. And again, when I draw comparisons to Marvel movies, this is where that comparison comes most fully, because I've always considered a lot of the third acts of the first stage of Marvel movies to be a little 
well, special effects extravaganzas. It's hard to get to the core of the human drama there. And I'll give Gal Gadot a lot of points for carrying. She pretty much has to carry the majority of the human drama coming out through the last point, the last 15 to 20 minutes of the movie. But the question that then comes up with this is that I wish that you didn't need the Ares character to inspire this loss of will and then rejoining of the conflict and then that additional fight that needs to take in. And it's a similar case where... Yes, there is mercy shown in probably the most obvious way, and I think that there's something that could have been said about that, but it also, when you start thinking about the larger context, it's not like Ares was wrong. The armistice was built to fail. It did lead to a rise of a more black and white versus good and evil conflict when you have World War II and the Nazis, which enacted even higher casualties. I wish there had been some acknowledgement that Diana could reach that conclusion without the figure of that villain there, and it ultimately leads to a third act that can feel again a little overblown a little bit too bombastic a little bit hard to follow in that final fight scene i gotta be honest the special effects really are tremendous and i must stress is the fight scenes are nuts Cre incredibly creative in how diana's using both the shield her sword and especially the lasso which is just fantastic but it's one of those cases where I think this movie could have afforded to extend things out a little bit in the third act. Maybe introduce Ares' character a little bit earlier, or at least the character that he's masquerading as. While I agree that the final sacrifice of a certain character, I'm not going to spoil that much, while I think that it was necessary, especially informing where Diana's character will eventually end up when you tie back to the rest of the Justice League DC movies, I do wish that he hadn't gone out in a very similar self sacrifice sacrificing way as another certain Marvel character that also represents the good, wholesome standout as a love interest of the main couple in the film. It involves a plane, and I'm just not really a fan of how that was done. Either way, in terms of what this film represents, I will give it a lot of praise for that. I will raise this as a good movie. It's a damn good movie. I highly recommend you see it. I'd be interested to see an extended cut if you have additional character pieces and character moments with the side characters or more scenes between Gal Gadot and Chris Pine to really flesh out that relationship. Maybe just ease back a little bit in the third act or maybe give it a little bit more punch by lengthening the runtime. Because again, I think this movie honestly could have run longer. I could have had more scenes in Themyscira. I could have had more scenes with the Amazons on Themyscira because again you hired some heavyweight actresses and they do a lot of subtle heavy lifting in some of these scenes especially Queen Hippolyta I think there's a lot of great work there I wanted to see more of them but again this is one of those cases when when you have characters where you want to see more and you have a scene and style and basic arc of a character that is as well executed as this one is, I gotta give it props for that. I really do. Again, I think the third act is a little weak, and I think the more I think about it, I wish that the Ares character wasn't there. I think there could have been a little bit more subtlety to how that message came through. I wish that Diana had a little bit more time to truly ingest it and truly come to that final revelation on her own. And there's a part of me that really, really does not like the fact that this is going to be tied in with the rest of the DC movies because, again, Wonder Woman's character is so... She so firmly defined her own lane and such a firm embodiment of the best elements of the comics that when you see elements like... Harry Cavill's Superman or Ben Affleck's Batman and just missing the point. I think that Wonder Woman just gets it so much more strongly and there's just so much more you can build off of there. You have Wonder Woman at the end of World War One, and then you fast forward X number of years later into the present day and you couldn't tell more stories in the hundred or so years that are there. Like I think there's so many storytelling opportunities because she is still active and in that world. I wish you had more chance to see those. Uh, it bothers me that she no now have to go back and be in Justice League because you're not going to get to see all that additional backstory and that's a little bit of a shame. But overall, I really like this movie. I've, I've struggled where I was going to call it out being a very, very good movie, a damn good movie, or exactly a great one, but you know what? I'm going to err on the side of being great, especially when, again, Gal Gadot's presence is so strong. She has such great chemistry with Chris Pine. I think there's a lot of potential there, and so I'm thinking a very, very light 8 out of 10, definitely recommendation. I know you probably are all going to go see this movie. It's going to be fascinating to see how DC reacts, because, again, I think they were doing this movie because 
we kind of have to make a Wonder Woman movie against the before the Justice League just to establish her character a little bit more beyond when she showed up and Batman v Superman and was the best part of that movie. But again, like, I'm happy she's here. I'm happy she introduced this. I'm happy that this movie has the potential to really shake up the superhero genre by doing it with a certain amount of conventionality. The fact that this character has been proven to work, this opens up gateways for both Marvel and DC. Because right now, Marvel now has no excuse why there's not a Black Widow movie or why there's not a Miss Marvel movie coming up sooner, or why DC can then uh, extend their roster a little bit further to pull in other female characters that we would love to see. There are now so many options available, the fact that this movie did as well and has continued to do well. It's blowing apart expectations and I'm thrilled by that. So yeah, definitely manage to check out Wonder Woman if you haven't. If you guys want any more details, I'm curious where you guys sat in the movie. You got the poll right there. If there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys want me to cover more movies on this channel, the link to my Patreon is right there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week you guys get to add records or movies to my schedule. So until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.